Please listen. So you've learned a couple forms. You've learned slope intercept. You need to be able to distinguish between among all the forms. So please pay attention. Which is y equals mx plus b. Slope intercept gives you the slope m and the y intercept 0 comma b. So that's the first thing you guys learned. You should be writing this on the front side. I'm trying to help you guys distinguish between all or among all three forms. It is important you guys know what each one means. So slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. Slope is m. Y intercept is 0 comma b. So you always start at your y intercept and you move your slope. The form you guys learned yesterday, which is your new form, is point slope, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Again, you need to know these formulas all by yourself by the test next week. You need to know how to distinguish when it's in point slope versus standard versus slope intercept. So M is still your slope. But your point is opposite Y1 comma opposite X1. So that's what you guys learned yesterday. And you guys learned to plot the point and then use the slope from that point. Correct? So that's just a little recap of what we've done since the last quiz. Speaking of quiz, if you would like to retake your quiz, come in in the morning. All I've been doing with kids is having them take out a separate sheet of paper, go over the problems they did wrong. Once I feel like you're ready, I'll give you the other one. So it may not be that day. If I don't feel like you're ready, I'll give you more problems to try. Does that make sense? I don't want to give you a quiz and you do worse on it. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you guys want to do that, you can come in either before school anytime this week or after school on Thursday. Your test is next week. Don't forget about Clever. All right. Let's start with the new one. So standard form is AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are real numbers, which means they are not fractions or decimals. And A and B are both not zero. So a real number is just meaning they're not fractions or decimals there. Well, that's not what real number means, actually. Real number could include fractions and decimals, but these real numbers cannot be fractions or decimals. Okay, so graphing from standard form. If you are in AS plus BY equals C form, this is what you can do. You can find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, solve the equation for the y and use or you can solve the equation for the y and use slope-intercept form. Those are your two options, right? We always can put it into slope-intercept form. Didn't we talk about that yesterday as well? We said, though, there's sometimes it's adva there's advantages of using point-slope form over slope-intercept form, like when there's fractions and you guys struggle with fractions, but it's okay to put it into slope-intercept form. So the first way you can do this, and I'm going to do it both ways on this one and then probably just do standard form from there, but the first way you can do it is finding the x and y intercepts. To find the x and y intercept, to find the x intercept, what do you know about y? What do you know about y? Yes. It has to be 0. So to find the x intercept, you're going to let y equal 0 in your original equation. So do you see our original equation is here? 3x plus 2y equals 6. So to find the y, or the x-intercept, y is 0. So we plug in 0 for y. So I do 3x plus 2 times 0 equals 6. So 3x equals 6. 
So x equals 2. What ordered pair was just created there? What ordered pair was just created there? Who knows the ordered pair that was created? Kaylee? 2, 0. Two comma 0. We're saying when x is 2, y is 0. So that's 2 comma 0. So our x intercept is 2 comma 0. So what do you guys think we're going to do to find the y-intercept? What could we do then to find the y-intercept? Josh? Uh, plug, uh, in zero for x. Yeah, we know when we're on the y-axis, right? We haven't moved left or right, so x is 0. So we're going to plug in 0 for x. So that is 3 times 0 plus 2y equals 6. So 2y equals 6, so y equals 3. Justin Powers, what ordered pair was just created there? 0, 3. Okay, so if you do it that way, then all you'll do is plot those two points. So if you do it that way, you'll plot those two points. So 2, comma 0 and 0, 3 and connect them with a straight edge. So if you don't have a straight edge, I'll get one handed out to you in just a second. So that's how you would do it in standard form, just so you're aware. If you need a straight edge, please raise your hand. If you do not have a straight edge, raise your hand. You should be using a straight edge. If you do not have a straight edge, please raise your hand. You do not have a straight edge, please raise your hand. Anybody else need one? Pass that back. Man, phones without cases feel so much better than phones with cases and telling you phrases. All right. So connect that line. Or, guys, or what you could have done is just put it into slope-intercept form. Now, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do both ways. I'm just going to show you both ways on the first one. So if I were to put this into slope-intercept form, which is way B up there, Colin, what would you have me do first to put it into slope-intercept form? All right. Um, you would need to subtract 3x from both sides. Okay, Justin, what would you do after that? So if you notice, if you do it that way, we start at 3, and we will go down 3, right 2, down 3, right 2. Is that still the same line? So whatever way makes most sense to you is fine, but on the homework tonight, you need to use, like, the intercepts just because that's what you're practicing. But, like, on the test next week, if it makes more sense to put into slope-intercept form, that's completely fine. I just want you to practice that skill tonight. Questions so far? When you are ready, go ahead and flip to the next slide. You'll be able to catch up real quick if you just go to the next one. It's not going to be too bad for you because we're basically doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, use the intercepts to graph 4x minus 2y equals negative 10. How do we find the x-intercept, Miguel? What do we do to find the x-intercept? What do you say? You don't put 0 in for x. Which one do you put 0 in for? So you let y equal 0. For the x-intercept, you have it moved up or down. So you're on the x-axis, so y will always be 0, right? Because you haven't moved up or down. So we're going to let y equal 0, and we'll plug that into our equation. So we do 4x minus 2 times 0 equals negative 10. Yes, Kaylee? Do you have to, like, write that each time? No, I'm just doing that for the notes so you guys know what's going on, that I'm not just making things up. So I get x equals negative 5 over 2, which 
is negative 2.5. So what is my x-intercept? How would I write that as an ordered pair? Jordan, how would I write that as an ordered pair? Jana, how do I find the y-intercept? What do I do? Yeah, when you're on the x, or when you're on the y-axis, which is the up and down one, you haven't moved left or right any, so you're at zero. So you let y, or yeah, you let x equal zero, sorry, and you plug that in. So you do 4 times zero minus 2y equals negative 10. So notice real quickly, when I did 4 times zero, 4 times zero is, so I have 0 minus 2y. So do you notice that I kept the negative here? A lot of kids lose the negative, okay, from here to here. Do not lose that negative. It's that you always take the sign that's in front of the number. So y equals 5. So Tanari, what is that as an ordered pair? Good. So then we plot our points. So negative two and a half is halfway between two and three, and then you can just connect them with your straight edge. Okay, but let's talk about this for a second. Two and a half is pretty easy to plot, but what if it had been like two thirds or two fifths? Doesn't it get a little bit harder? What do you notice about the y-intercept? Is that a whole number? Yes. So in y equals mx plus b, is it going to be a whole number there then? What will your b value be in y equals mx plus b? What is it, Justin? 5, because no, the y-intercept isn't the b value, just the y-intercept. So in this case, it might even be better just to put this into slope-intercept form because you have that decimal there. So in this case, it might be better to put it into slope-intercept form because of that decimal there, making it a better or an easier one to graph. Half isn't that bad, though. So you divide everything by negative 2, and you would get y equals 2x plus 5. Wow. So notice, we would still start at 5, right? But if you follow this line, and I go down 2, right 1, down two, right one, down two, right one. Is it still the same line? Yeah. But do you see how that might have been easier because it wasn't a halfway point anymore? So just, you know, thinking about why we do what we do, looking at those situations. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right, any questions so far before we move on to the next one? Okay. Okay, wait, is this one even in, in um, standard form? No, it needs to be AX plus BY equals C. So what could I do to put it into that form? Yeah. Subtract 24Y. Yeah, and technically this still is not in standard form. There are other rules that apply, but we are not going to worry about those rules at the moment. We'll worry about those rules after the test when we're writing equations in standard form. But there's other rules that apply, like the number in front of X can't be negative. And if there's a number that goes into all of them, it needs to be divided out. So, like, technically 6 goes into 6, 24. I shouldn't have plus 12 there. It should be equals 12. But technically, 6 goes into all of those numbers. So you would have to divide it out. And we'll talk about that more later. Do you need to have it in standard form to graph the intercepts, though? Could you use the intercepts in any form? Yeah, you can. It doesn't matter if it's in point-slope form or standard form or slope-intercept form or a form that's not even a form, like this one. You can always plug in y equals 0 to find the x-intercept, and then you can plug in x equals 0 to find the y-intercept. You don't have to put it into the correct form. So if you are ever stuck when it comes to graphing, like on any situation, and you can't figure out how to move the form, for the x-intercept, let y equals 0, plot that point. For the y-intercept, let x equal 0 and plot that point. Do you guys all understand that? Sure. So if you're ever having a hard time, like, or like, for example, sometimes it's hard to do a slope if your x and y axis are graph or are different scales, right? So sometimes it's better just to find the intercepts. It doesn't matter if it's in slope-intercept form. Let y equal 0. 
Find x. That's your x-intercept. Let x equal 0. Find y. That's your y-intercept. So just so you guys are aware. Okay, so the x-intercept. So I'm going to first start with letting y equal 0 to find my x-intercept. Tanari, what is that as an ordered pair for the x-intercept? And then I'm going to let x equal 0. RC, what is that as an ordered pair for the y-intercept? So we plot our points. And we connect them. Would this one be beneficial to put into slope intercept form? Would this one benefit from put, being put into slope intercept form? Huh? Yeah. I did ask if anybody needed one, but I think you were still at the getting eye drops at that point. Does this one benefit to be put into slope intercept form? No. No, because your y intercept is going to be a fraction too, right? Isn't that what b is? <laughs> so it really doesn't matter there. All right, go ahead and flip when you're ready. What do you guys know about y equals 5? Yeah. Uh, can I go back? Not right now, not in the middle of lesson. Just wait. So if we let x equal 0, first of all, for the x-intercept, you let y equal 0, right? Sure. Does 0 equal 5? Oh. No. No, so that means there's no x-intercept. That means there's no x-intercept here. For the y-intercept, you let x equal 0, but is there even an x in there? No, but we know that y is 5, so it must be at 0, comma, 5. So if we plot a point at 0, comma, 5, and we have no x-intercept, what kind of line is going to be drawn here? A horizontal. Is a y equals equation always horizontal? Yes. What is the slope of this line? What percent, what percent sloped is this? Zero. zero, so it's a zero slope. So it's always horizontal. Y equals is always horizontal and has a zero slope. Um, so notice also a Y cuts the Y. So a Y equals equation must cut the Y axis. Is it cutting the X axis? No, so that's also what makes it horizontal because it has to cut through the Y axis. Okay, a few things there you might want to write down. So y equals is always horizontal. All right, next one. To find the x-intercept, you let y equal 0. There is no y, so it must be at negative 4 comma 0. To find the y-intercept, you let x equal 0. Okay, but does 0 equal negative 4? No, so there is no y-intercept in this one. That's what that means. There is no y-intercept. So you plot a point at neg x equals negative 4, and since it can't cross the y-axis, it has to be what kind of line? Vertical. 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 
Vertical. What is the slope? Undefined. Undefined. You can't define the slope. So a x equals equation is always vertical with a slope of undefined. All right, what questions do you guys have so far before we do the last two? Emma, I'm sorry. All right, guys, even if it's in slope intercept form, do you need me to go back, Josh? No. Oh, okay. Does anybody need me to go back? Even if it's in slope intercept form, we could do plot two and go up four over one. That would be fine. But we could also find the x and y intercepts. To find the x intercept, you let y equal zero. So you have zero equals four x plus two. So negative two equals four x. <laughs> My mommy texted me. I'm not mad at you. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So x equals negative one half. Lexi, what is that as an ordered pair? Uh, uh, wait, negative one half comma zero. Good. Okay, to find the y-intercept... You let x equal zero. Guys, don't you just see it? Yeah, yeah. what you always going to say, Justin, or you can just see it. Where is it at? Right there. Right. It's the two there. But if you do plug it in, do you guys notice that it is also going to give you two there? Yeah. So that's why that's the case. That's why that's your y-intercept every single time is because if you multiply the slope by zero, it's always going to be zero. So that's why that happens to always be the slope. Colin, do you have a question? No, I was just going to say, like, when you started solving it, I'm like, are we actually just going to solve this? Yes. Just so you guys can see the point behind it. All right. So, guys, I'm not done with notes. I will be done with notes probably in the next five minutes, and then you guys will have a chance to work on homework and talk. So can you please be respectful until then? Yes. Thank you. So you get your line going that way. So it doesn't matter if you like it better doing it in slope intercept form and plotting two and then going up four over one, fine. If you like these intercepts better because it's super easy, you don't have to move anything around, fine. Don't really care which way you do it. Yes. Why is yours Just going no, the I've, opposite I've way? Because it's positive over. and you're doing a negative slope here. All right, last one. You, you make decorative bows. You sell small bows for $3 and large bows for $5 each. You can, want to earn $60 per week. So what are our two, what are our two um, types of things going on here? What are we trying to find about? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to call X small bows and Y large bows. I'm going to label that there, and I'm also going to come down to my graph and put it down here. So this is small bows. You can barely see that, but that's what I'm writing there. And up here will be large bows. And you guys have more space than me, so you should be able to write that down. So it's good to label your x and y axis too. So what is the equation you can write? What is the equation you can write here? If it's three dollars for small bows, five dollars for large bows, and you want sixty dollars, Gordon? So three dollars per small bow plus five dollars per large bow equals sixty. So to graph the situation, we're going to just find the x and y intercept. To find the x intercept, we let y 
So x equals 20. So our intercept is at 20 comma 0. So I plot a point at 20 comma 0, which is right here. Okay, for the y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So we do 3 times 0 plus 5y equals 60. So 5y equals 60. So y equals 12. So we're at 0, 12, and we plot a point there. And we can connect our two points. Okay, before I connect my two points, will my points have arrows? No, because can you make negative large bows or negative small bows? Yeah, you Yeah, I don't think that makes it negative, though. But you could. So we just have the line segment that connects the two points there. So connect your points with your straight edge. Connect your points with your straight edge. Do you have a question? No, I'm sure. So give two possibilities for the number of each types of bows that you can use. So give me a possibility. Give me a possibility here. I see. What? Oh, oh. It has to be meeting at an exact point. Okay. So it's hard to see this, but I'll circle some exact points here. Actually, somebody give me a point and we'll check it. Give me a point. 96. Alyssa, what are you thinking? 8-7. Eight, 8-7 seven. Eight, you're thinking? So let's see if 8, 7 is an exact point. How can you check to see if 8, 7 is an exact point? Do it. Plug it in. So you can do 3 times 8 plus 5 times 7 equals 60. Does 35 plus 24 equal 60? No. So is that an exact point? Okay, good try, though. Like That's how you can check yourself. Josh. 10, 6. 10, 6 right here? Yeah. So if we do 10, 6 and we plug that in, that's 3 times 10 plus 5 times 6 equals 60. Yeah. Does 30 plus 30 equal 60? Yeah. So is that okay? Yeah. We're just going to find one and we're not going to do both. So what is 3, comma, or sorry, is it 10, 6? What does 10, 6 mean in terms of this problem? Mm -hmm. Colin, what does 10, 6 mean in this problem? Oh, uh, it means, let's see. 10 small bows and 6 large bows. Yeah, you can make 10 small bows and 6 large bows for $60. Yeah. Okay, before we, before I hand out home,